Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Triss and this is the Double O'Neill channel and you're checking in for the Elsewhere Updates which is the name of my railway if you don't already know we recently named it which has been brilliant. I didn't do a video on Wednesday, I hope you didn't mind, been pretty busy but what I have been doing during all of that time is I've been taking little recordings of all the things I've been doing and there is a lot coming on this episode so stay tuned don't go skipping through I do it with some people's videos but no you need to watch all of it because there's so many different things going on so one big thing that I've absolutely loved doing it is the little 009 pannier I've done updates on it and we've got it working it's looking good and I can't wait to show you all of that I'll give you a little sneak peek now. It's here. This little gem. We get that one in focus. Looking pretty tidy, but we'll talk more about that. I'll be getting onto some video clips and I'll show you the start to finish from the 3D model to the point that I've painted it and we've got it running on the track. Um, whilst doing all that, I also made some wagons for it. Well, I didn't make them, I just repainted some. Again, I'll go over that in a bit. Got loads of stuff coming. Um, also, I had some fun um, up on the railway. Um, I put an extra line up. Um, again, not an extra line as such, but on the um, lift out section. I've done a bit more of that, put my copper clad sleepers on the ends. Check out my email in the description below if you're interested in them. Still, I've had a load of people contact me, um, and some people not even sure how to contact me, but get hold of me. Click on that um, kind of more information tab on the on the right of the comments, no, above the comments, I don't know where it is exactly, um, and you can look on there. Um, and so, yeah, so I, I, I got that on, I got it working, I'm using electrofrog points this time, which I'll talk to you about it a little bit more, um, that's going to help me wire them up, but they should be absolutely fine. Um, as well as that, I had some fun with like my GoPro, I ran it around on my last video, where I ran it around the outside whilst I was doing things, um, and I've done the same this time. Um, but with a difference, um, before I just mounted it on a wagon, um, but what I've done now is I've got this bogey wagon, which I've actually had, I think, since I was tiny. And so I, I ummed and ahed whether I should do this or not. But I'm not going to use it for anything. So what I did was I hacked a hole in the side. I actually chipped away, you'll see, just here. If that's in the zoom, I'm not in... Are we in focus? I think we're in focus. Should be good enough. Um, it, it chipped away there when I was doing it, but I got it on the milling machine and hacked away at that. Um, so if you have a look now, you'll see me machining away um, this really brittle, horrible plastic to try and machine. When I went too fast with the spindle, it just melted straight away, wrapped itself around that helix of the cutter. Um, I'm only using a drill chuck, so I was doing something in there at the time, and I'm only cutting some plastic lightly. And I even had to, <laughs> dangerously actually, I'm, I'm pretty good with like work holding, but this thing was flexing around, I had to kind of hold it down a little bit whilst machining it, it was a bit dangerous, I kind of wish I didn't record it, <laughs> but it's there, I thought let's just pop it in, you guys can have a watch and see me doing that, and we get my GoPro, this is just a Hero 7, um, I brought it about two months before the Hero 8 came out I think, <laughs> Then I was like, oh, come on. Um, but fine, you can pick these up, I think, on like Amazon and various different places for, I don't know, like the 160, 170 mic now. And they do 4K recording, they do 60 frames per second. Um, they do a brilliant job. Anyway, this just drops in here. And that will do a fantastic job of recording the locos. So I'm going to fire some of those clips on as well throughout the videos that are coming up and you can just watch the bits of fun that I had and I've got loads of ideas about what I want to do and I'm going to actually build a rig um, to kind of go with this so that I have some little lights because I felt it was a bit dark in places um, and I have some LEDs popping out the side, maybe 3D print some mounts for the LEDs to come out and then um, for what I want to do for a future video which I think you guys might enjoy is have it mounted forward going around so we can get really good quality forward motion uh, as we go around the layout but it needs to be done in the right way it needs to be supporting itself properly because it is wider than the wagon um, and I've got some fun ideas in my head about it and I want to have a light platform on the front pick up the power off the track and get a really bright LED unit lighting up where we're going so that will be 
for me really really fun um i really you guys enjoy it i'll share it anyway if you watch my videos fine if you don't well you, you're not missing anything i guess if you're not watching i don't know you're probably watching something else far more interesting um so with that um i wanted to talk about when i was working on the pannier i used um some of this uh, which is called tungsten rig putty and tungsten is a really heavy metal um a lot of people use uh lead putty which isn't very healthy and so that you the modern alternative is this and you can put that inside wagons or inside the engines to weight them up to make them work better and i want to get more and more of this because i want to put it in like some of my engines that don't work so well get some more weight in there so we either balance the weights um or we get it so they just bit more pressure on the track and kind of contact a bit better and I actually managed to get my um, little narrow gauge engine it's around the 50 gram mark so it's getting it's getting heavy I have to double check my facts on that one but I believe it's 50 grams um, by absolutely squeezing in all that extra weight um, the other cool thing um, I looked on the model you kind of 3d printing website where they scan people and stuff like that and I've got some great Western uh, I've got a fireman is that a fireman? That's the driver, um, seated on regulator, which sounds very uncomfortable. Um, and then you've got the fireman leaning with shovel. Um, and what I'm going to do is um, get them in, probably not on this video, because I only got these um, yesterday in the post, which was wicked. Uh, they're four pound fifty each. They it said on the website like once two weeks like, delivery, you know, up to. Um, but it came in a couple of days. I was really impressed. So. I'm not affiliated with anyone, just saying. Um, I fancied going on there because I'd seen some things. Um, my camera's not gonna focus at all, but you can you can see them in the packet there. But I'm not gonna give it all away now. We'll do that in a future video and we'll maybe see if we can drop them inside the little loco. I think we might have to chop some little legs off, but fine, it is what it is. We get that in there. Um, and yeah, so enjoy the clips that are coming up. I'll do some voiceover, we'll have some music, you can enjoy it. I've enjoyed just recording it because I'm like, this is going to be a long video, but fine. So what? This is what I'm doing. This is my adventure in the loft. Um, this is what I'm enjoying and I hope you enjoy it too. So no further ado, let's go up into the loft and have some fun. So here we are up in the loft. I'm going to get the GoPro going and put it on a... <laughs> on the wagon off we go scootering around and as you've already seen from the gopro's um perspective so the purpose of what i'm doing today is adding the extra line so i've got one complete circuit going now i need to finish by the station end at some point but that'll be the last bits that i do but i'm okay with that but these bits i'm pleased with i've got the pico insole frogs that are on the bit that's already down and on this bit I'm actually going to put down the electro frogs um, my father gave me some and I bought some at model shows kind of second hand but they seem to be in nice condition having a good look at it so what I'm doing here is I'm going to space it with the 40 mil little spacer that I made to gauge it out to the right length so it all tapers in to this point and then we work down etc etc and I'm just going to screw it down so I can then mark it for that's where the cork's going to go. Um, and then I can work all the way down until I get to this point that everything's absolutely aligned to how I want it. Um, and it means that there's no surprises later on when I'm trying to do bits and bits just don't connect up in the end. So I'm doing the cork. I'm going to stick that in place. I have a medium length and a small of the electro frogs. Um, which seems um, like the right kind of thing to do um, for what I want to do here anyway. Here's my little jig, soldering jig to make it so much easier with my CNC machined uh, copper clad sleepers. If you are interested in them, I've had quite a few people get in touch with me so far, just let me know. I do them in code 75, code 100, I've done 009 um, irregular sleepers as well as mainline sleepers. So. I've even been asked about Engage, but no one's followed me up on it yet, but that's fine. It gives me more time to do these sorts of things. So yeah, off we go with this. I'm just kind of basically cut out the shapes for the um, cork for the um, turnouts, the points. Um, and I'll stick them in place because I know where everything needs to be now. And we just go from there basically.
So I think that's enough for that. We're sticking them down and we're going to the next video. So we have our engine and it's looking pretty smart. It's the one that you saw before. We had the 3D printed video that I did when I first got the Anycubic Photon and I thought, right, let's, let's use that. Um, the print has been good. It's a little bit noisy when it's wearing away. If you leave it going overnight, it, <laughs> it can keep you up with the uh, stepper motor going up and down for the different layers. Um, I've gone through many different iterations of print to try and get a good print quality of what I want. Um, but I got there in the end. But this is the main engine, as you remember. So we get the, the other one up or unhide that one. I draw using a Creo 3 or Pro Engineer, some people ask about, but I also use Fusion 360 from time to time. So that's something you can uh, sit down and hash out ideas. But the instant bits, I did the updates on this as a bigger coal bunker, um, so we can have more coal. I got a nice suggestion off YouTube for that one from uh, one of the subscribers, which is brilliant. Um, so that was cool. Um, there's lots of other bits that might stand out to you. You see there's some... Uh, a little foot rail for him to step on if he's getting on or, or she whoever's driving um, and then you just look through it I finished off the bottom of the boiler not boiler uh, the firebox that's got the rounded edges on there um, and then you just kind of hunt through see it's smooth on the inside now which means I can pack a bit more weight inside and obviously I put that putty inside before as well as on the little pannier sections on the side where the water tanks are I squeezed lots of weight in there on the clock face on the front, I've added a little tab there, so it actually prints, because it didn't print before um, when I ran the um, print on the other one. It didn't have a little tab to support it. And I did the same for the little whistle, um, which we're focusing on in a bit. Um, but you've got the safety valve. I've put some detail in the top there just to give it a bit more of a look. And then we've put a little whistle on there, which printed out very nicely when I eventually did it. So that was, that was satisfying, obviously, and I coloured it. Um, gold just so we can see it or, or brass to be more precise um, the other main details that you can probably spot is that we've got um, the water pipes on there that go to a collection point that would have been pushed up by the clack valve I guess um, and they kind of really finish off the the look of the Great Western pannier so the next step will be to get it onto the slicer so I'll turn it into an STL file um, which turns into like a million triangles to capture all the detail and then I save that and then I put it on to the Anycubic slicer software which we have here um, looking at it you'll see all the little legs that go underneath it and all that's doing is supporting it where it's about to be printed so then you can do your building blocks like it's trying to build a Lego treehouse without building the trunk that takes up to the treehouse it's, it's not going to go very well um, and that's what you have to do with this. And even with this, there's bits that failed because I didn't do it. But this isn't the end one I ended up with. I actually did a slightly different um, slicing and, and supporting um, process for this. So I've been learning a lot. But you can see here, it's at an angle. It's going up and down. And it has to expose the UV light onto the resin. That cures that bit. And then it will go up. And then it will kind of go back down. And then you do the next layer. And I was doing this in 0.02 steps, so that's very, very tiny amount. But you can imagine that it took a while. That took 15 hours to do the print at 0.02. But once it's done, I give it a little clean up, get some thousand grit sandpaper on certain areas, just get it nice and smooth so it looks nice. And then I got some rail match paint, which I wish I painted it by hand in the end because I have used pretty much a whole can to paint this up. It felt like the paint went everywhere but the place that I was spraying it. <laughs> I had more up my nose. Um, obviously, I was in a ventilated area, so I was fine. But it was like, come on, it's not even taken. Um, but it got there in the end, and I got the most beautiful coat in the end. Um, yeah, um, that's that. So I think next time I'll, you know, I want to get an airbrush. I've got a, an airbrush, but I want to get an air compressor so I can do it. But it came out quite nicely. We've got a lovely, lovely green um, there. I went for the the post uh, 1928 green which is a bit darker and it looks really good in this picture actually it looks very dark but you'll see on other videos that it's actually a lot brighter so now I've just basically used the bad and black by the Citadel paints and I'm gonna paint all the face 
Um, what I normally do is water the paints down, but because I'm painting acrylic onto enamel, I actually went a bit thicker with the paints, and it um, just went on much, much better. Um, so I think I need to get more enamel paints in my range, because um, I kind of prefer how the colours come out with the enamels. Um, the paint kind of cures harder, um, and it's just a bit more believable that you're not going to scratch it, um, and the finish comes out how you want it to. But that's fine, that's fine. Uh, I'll be showing you some wagons in a bit that I was doing. Um, basically, I just worked around all the areas that need to be black. You'll see that there's actually a chipped piece off the front end of it, which I'll repair in a bit. I'll be using some milli put, um, kind of a two-part mix. Squish around with your fingers and sculpt it with whatever tools you've got kicking around. Um, after doing the sculpting, I actually found all my sculpted tools. <laughs> it's always the case uh, from when I did my uh, Warhammer figures when I was a bit younger. Um, actually, when I say a bit younger, it was only a couple of years ago that I was tinkering away with them. Um, but I used to get the green stuff and, and kind of have a little bit of fun. You know, add a cape here and there or a bit of whatever. So I've actually bought some more green stuff since doing this. I know I'm going to use it to fill in details and make something look a bit nicer. But I basically went down the paint scheme of how the Great Western Panniers were painted anyway. So with the black roof, um, certain points below the cab that are black. Um, and try and give it the Great Western look. Um, I, I love the look of it. I love the Southern Railway look as well. Um, but I've loved the Great Western since I was young. Probably because my dad has it. So then I kind of followed suit and just looked nice. That green just looks great kind of look to it. Um... Yeah, so that's all the all the black there. I used the acrylic black on the roof, but I wasn't happy. I actually came over later with some Real Match uh, roof dirt, um, part of the acrylic range, and it looked much better, actually, once I did that. So now I'm using kind of a very dark gold to paint the um, safety valve, as well as the whistle. Um, and that's kind of like a base layer before I put the bright gold on. I wasn't completely happy with how it all came out. It looked very painted on, but I'd like to get a uh, project finished of mine which is a little CNC lathe and it means I could turn a beauty, well, really beautiful looking uh, safety valve as well as the bit that goes on top of the chimney um, that, that you know get that really nice and just have them actually out of brass and drop them on don't paint them um, just lacquer them and they will look great but that's a project for another day if I get it done now here's my really bright gold it's really good from Citadel again um, just their, their ranges of paints are, are brilliant but there are other paints out there um, and I've got various army painter ones I've got humble paints and real match so I'm planning to get a few more to add to the range so I've got a few more options but this came out nicely and after I actually painted this I uh, used some um, it's called Ard Coat <laughs> it's by uh, Games Workshop again or Citadel um, and it's just a glossy um, varnish that we put over that to make it look good um so then yeah i've got my nice bright red for the well the buffer end um not that you really have buffers on these because it's a bit of a flat plate but i'll start out and do quite a few layers on this i ended up i think three or four just nice thin layers i watered them down with um the thinners the white spirit and then once that was done um i hadn't quite finished all the red at this point um i kind of doctored the uh, the area that had a chip and I thought I'd add that back in, just use my craft knife to um, just shape it. I've got a little bit of a groove here. And I thought that would be good. No, oh, that dropped off. <laughs> this is the thing. Um, it never goes completely perfectly, but we've all done this kind of thing. You think, that's it. It's about perfect now. And then it comes off and away. So you can do most of the moulding with your, your fingers. So you have a crazy amount of control with your fingertips bit the knife with its sharp point I use it to kind of push it on a bit firmer and then give it shape so that's looking pretty good I'm happy with that you can see that's the little groove that it's all sitting in and then once it's painted it'll be fine I've added the same kind of warped angle that's on the other side so I've painted it black and now I'm just adding a bit more red so it really pops out uh, and that's that now it's time for transfers. These are the prefix ones. I was really pleased with how these went. Um, they were by a company called HMRS um, Transfers. They're in Workshop actually, which is a place I've been to quite a few times for racing. Um, I can't remember how much the sheet was. You'll find them on um, 
eBay and stuff like that, I'm sure, from various places. But they do ones for wagons as well as the engines. I actually initially started out, which you'll see in one clip coming up, um, where I actually put the coach ones on, which were a bit smaller but kind of suited the size of it. But in the end, I used these ones because they looked a bit nicer. They got the yellow in them and they really made the little engine pop and give it a real cute look with the... Well, see, you drop them down there, pick them up, make some tweezers. Um, really give it a cute look and I'm really pleased with it. So basically, you, you get it off the piece of paper. It's like a bit of card and I cut to a certain point, um, get the square out and I then peel off the thinner, tissuey, papery, toppy bit um, which then carries this with it. You drop them all on there, position how you want to do, and then you just squash it down with your thumb um, until you're happy. Um, and if not, very carefully peel it back and have another go. So you can see here, I'm just positioning until I'm happy. See, I wasn't happy with that one. Get the gapping right. But then you give it a good old rub of the thumb, and it's as simple as that, really. And then you get a bit of wet tissue, sort of dead water on it, and that goes and soaks into the tissue that's holding this part, or the thin paper. And that gets basically wet. Um, see, it's nice and soggy there, um, and it, it's done. Well, not soggy, it's actually there's no loads of water, but it, it's soaked in now. Um, and I leave it on there for like 20 seconds, and all I do is I peel it off afterwards, and you get this, the well, really, really nice looking transfer that's on there now. So, obviously, after I've done this side, I'll do the other side, and we'll speed up the process a bit. Um, the, the important bit is you put it the right way around, so instead of um, GWI, I think I, on, when I first had it go, you didn't see it on the camera, but I kind of started with the, the G on the wrong end, and I was like, right, that's not so good. Um, but yeah, so that's that. So we give it a good a rub, we get the moisture on to it, any second, there we go, we're getting it damp, see it's all wet, and all we do is we peel them off. Super easy. It's very satisfying as well. Um... <laughs> It's more satisfying than when you pull a plaster off your skin and you're pulling all your hairs off. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that peels off and you just think, wow, that really finishes off the model nice. That's the uh, the roof, uh, weathered black it was called, sorry. Um, and I kind of just gave that a paint up and I was kind of happy with how that looked. It gave it a better look in my view anyway. So that came out very, very nicely. I only gave it the one coats. And um, it looks good. Just finish off the ends. And that's that. It's kind of looking nice. I've let it dry now. Um, I'm just putting the hard coats that I told you about, the gloss acrylic um, coats. And it will just make it shine a bit more um, where the metal parts are. I've just got a little bit of, um, of it on the um, the whistle. And that should give it, and I said, look, when I'm filming it and the light's coming on, it should give it that more metallic look, let's say. And then now the really fun bit is we're going to add some coal um, to the little bunker there. Um, and I kind of just made sure it went to the edges before we got going. Um, I started putting it in with tweezers and I thought, hang on, that's going to take me some time. So I found a little spatula. And off we go. So we'll just start pouring that in. I won't be a very good fireman. It'd take me hours to uh, to get that fire going. Um, but for me, that was fine. And all I did was I kind of mixed around what was already in there just to create a paste. To be honest, it didn't even need to be filled up with that. I could put something else in there first. But now I'll fill it up. And uh, we'll get to the appropriate kind of heights and uh, see how it's looking. And just make it look respectable. I tried to find the, the chunkier bits that looked kind of like a realistic size. I put some isopropyl alcohol in there first, just to get rid of that surface tension, and then dropped in some um, watered down PVA glue with a bit of washing up liquid. I can't tell you how pleased I am with how this looks. When it's going around with its cute little wobble that it has, it just looks brilliant with the little details and I don't know, just it's kind of unique look. I'm kind of thinking it's got a bit of charm and um, I think it will win people over. The Great Western Railway um, decals on the side, the transfers, I think they suit it. Being a bit oversized, I think, kind of brings everything to proportion to show that it is a narrow gauge engine. It's not anything that's scaled down as such relative to 00. But yeah, 
what it does need though is some wagons to pull and what we do is we're gonna paint the wagons up and they're just some wagons that I've had already I didn't go out and buy them especially and so what we do is we'll go have some fun we'll paint them grey we'll add Great Western to them and then we'll get back up to the railway and do some recording now it's as simple as it looks I've grabbed this is a Pico wagon that I bought when I first got my 009 bits and I purely wanted to just paint them grey so this is a wagon that was built from a kit that I was uh, given to by a friend from a grandfather that passed away this would have been about I guess about 10 years ago 12 years ago maybe more um, and my dad gave them to me to, to continue one had a nice little cover on it and I thought I'd just do these three and uh, see how it gets on I've got a couple others that I could do but I wouldn't mind buying a few more of the Pico ones they're 18 pounds so quite dear um, compared to like the double O gauge ones I could buy um, but I guess they don't sell so many so they need to put the price tag there to kind of cover the engineering costs of the mold tools as well as um, design work and everything that goes into them so they look cute um, and I'd like to get some more they didn't weigh a lot they're about five grams whereas some of the ones that were built here had lead strapped them as well that made them like what well, one was about 14 grams so uh, made it a bit more tricky going up the hills but all I'm doing is I'm doing a few coats of grey uh, which is a great western stock grey and um, yeah came out alright I double checked what the double O sized wagons had on it I like the colour wise and um, just went by that basis really and um, most of it was grey and then you have the darker undertones on the, the axle area uh, so I used um, some of that again my brother got me for a birthday a couple of years ago um, I never actually got around to building the kit that he gave me but I will do and we might see it on a video but these are the paints that he gave me to go with it and I thought let's finally use them on the 009 so just doing the last coats really um, this was the first coat this is the last coats and um, it, they came out quite nicely after doing that before putting the transfers on I ended up putting some gloss varnish over the areas that I want to put the transfers and it made them a deer better um, so that was good and uh, if I did them again I'd do that the same each way so just gloss the areas that you're going to put the transfers on I did a bit of work on the inside of them but I would like to add some various bits like coal and I don't know, stone, gold, diamonds, what should we put in there? Tin cans, I don't know, uh, whatever they find up in the mountains. Um, maybe a few goats and uh, lions, I guess. Get mountain lions right, mountain goats. So I guess you need like a little cattle truck for that. So now I'm just going to add the, uh, the, the, uh, the stick down transfers, which they like to call prefix, I understand. Again, it's the same company, but this is the stuff for rolling stock. So I try and position it, I line it up with one of the planks at the top, um, just for the top of the G, I kind of work it round the beams and everything on there, and I use one of my tools to kind of find the place, but the heat of my thumb in pressure, I used to make it hold on, give it a little dampen down, once it's dampened down, I then get my finger in there, make it moist, peel it off, and we're done. So that's one, and we work our way over, we do the W, try and get that going what I do is I don't cut it all out now I just kind of peel it off there and the integrity of the card stays I think that's what they tell you to do possibly there were some instructions and I went yeah yeah I'll be fine <laughs> um, and then it turns out no no they, they were right that's why they wrote instructions they know what they're doing always read the instructions that bit being a male um it's something that I don't always do but look at that that just transforms I've done this other side already um, but what we do is we do the others and we have some fun I've just put some gloss paint over these um, and make that solid and then I put some I've got some matte varnish that I put on and we just do the same in this one so I trim it out as you saw before we peel off our G we give it a squish down once we're happy with the position we make it moist and then we peel it off and um, it I just love what the transfer does where it really gives it that really good look um, and then we do the other one we drop it on there and we're happy so I'm really pleased with how these came out they just look great um, they just look like double O 
size ones but shrunken more like engage but with the large gw on there it just looks cool that's got the cover on i love that so what we do is we'll grab these three this is our last one this is the pico one and uh, we'll take them into the loft and we'll see how they look trailing behind that fantastic looking steam engine stock do some coaches with some cream and brown that will look really good okay so we're back in the loft I'm gonna finish this up now we're gonna um, well finish this part anyway we've got some really good stuff coming so please stay tuned um, otherwise you're gonna miss probably the best bit um, but yeah we'll put the point down I just basically have to run the wiring in just to loop up um, the um, the lift out section and I've got some nice plugs coming um, I'm going to connect up. I saw a video today that Chadwick uh, Model Railway they put up, and it was of basically like chocolate blocks and with ferrules he was showing, and it meant that you could like push these two chocolate blocks together, and that's from Squires. So that was quite cool for him to show that. I quite like the look of them. So if I didn't already have the connectors coming, I'd probably use them, and it means you can just easily disconnect everything. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I was actually messaging my dad on this, just double checking a couple of things on the electro fog um, bits, and I was like, I'm hanging on your every word, <laughs> see what you say. But I was already doing the right thing. Uh, I just wondered how I should wire them, but from what I understand, I've done all right uh, with the way that I've done it. Um, and if I have to, I can do some work later on, rip some things back up and, and redo it. That's always the beautiful thing about what we're doing. Even after you ballasted, that's not the end of it. You can still get it all up and redo everything. The three express points I have in the main straight that's been ballasted already. I want to rip them up and redo all that work. But fine. Here you can see I'm just adding the point in um, with a little short piece to, to join up with it. And I've got the insulated um, bits on where the frog is. And the frog's the small V in the middle, if you don't already know. If you're new to model railways, um, but you'll be learning about all of this as you get going. Um, so you have insole frogs, electro frogs, and I think even uni frogs, so you get to choose what you do. Um, I'm not completely sure, but you hear things. And now I just want to join the curve up, so I'm swapping over the points here, because we've got the Pico point here with a small insulative bit. So this one's the um, Hornby, and it's huge, and you actually get the engine cutting out on these, I find. Whereas on these, um, when the engine goes over them, it just runs so much better. And I've got a bunch of these, so I'm going to use them. And they're identical to the Hornby um, kind of like tight radius. I think it's first radius point. Um, and I actually pop it in here because it was what I did early on when I started playing with it all. Maybe later on I'll do something different, but I've um, added that in. And um, it will be good. It should run better. I won't have things stopping on it. I get my flexi track out. I had all this track before Corona happened. So, because I've been asked where did I get all my track from? Because it's like rocking horse. Um, my excrement and um no I, I bought loads of it ages ago and I hadn't got around to using it yet so it worked out quite nicely I used my 40 millimeter gauge and that just meant that everything is perfect as it comes round it's actually quite a tight radius that one if I did all of this again I'd have some larger radiuses but hey it's all part of learning and discovering your own things you hear so many things from other people but ultimately you've got to find out by yourself as that's all part of the enjoyment, learning, making mistakes, doing it again. So I'm just putting this down. I'd already pre-soldered some of my copper clad sleepers. And now I'm just marking out the bed like before. Putting some cork down. I cut the cork in half so I can go around corners. Always helps. And I use uh, track pins just to pin it in place. Just for now. And then I put it all back out afterwards. And then I put the track back down. And then I pin that in place. 
And once it's ballasted, I then pull some of the pins out. Not all of them, but just some of them. Um, just when you put the pin through, I've been asked by um, one uh, person that's messaging me if they're like the why I'm putting the pins in, and because it makes it noisy. And I'm like, ultimately, I'm I'm putting the cork in to give it the right kind of look, um, raise it up to a certain point. You know, in my opinion, it's all down to your own opinion of how things look. And um, you see, if I put a bit of card here between the track and the point, and that. Basically, you want to have like a 0.5 to 1 millimeter gap between the track. So when the loft gets hot, as it does do, or even when it gets cold, uh, through contraction and expansion, it allows room for it to grow. Um, and so, yeah, so otherwise, if you didn't pin it down as well, when you do that, you'll start seeing the uh, track getting warped. And when I haven't actually followed that rule in the past, um, and when I had started doing all this and it got warm, I'd come upstairs and I'd see there's a bit of track lifting up, so I'm like, right. So it's really important that you do that, so you give a nice gap, like I said, 0.5 to 1 millimetre between the tracks. So that's done. Now we're going to run the engine round just to make sure that it works. My main thing is just, I've been learning, is just check your track. Keep checking your track, and then check your track a bit more, and then check it some more. So that comes over the first join on the lift out section. No bother at all. Go under here over here the points is beautiful and over the last join and that's absolutely fine and on to the bit that I told you about that I ballasted that I'd like to rip up again sometime in the redo got some of my mock-up hill that's behind there just had some fun with it whacked some trees up that I bought cheap off eBay and off it goes now let's finish this off with a bit of fun with the GoPro chasing the penny around. those that have stuck it out and have enjoyed themselves with this very lengthy video lengthy video um, I'm gonna see you next time stay safe look after yourselves and I'll bring you a video whenever I can can't guarantee it'll be a Wednesday but I always try and do it for a Sunday again thank you thank you for watching and I'll see you soon